Hello and welcome to UAT time within the United Country special by First Ukraine. You can find us at the frequencies available to our website firstua.com. I'm Sergei Vilichansky. And I am Olivier Dreen. UAT time is dedicated to bring Ukraine and Europe closer to each other by introducing the real Ukraine to the rest of the world. The conflicts in 21st century are lost and won in the minds of people and not only on the battlefields. It is no wonder that after being in such a close proximity with Russia for many years, and especially having had all key positions with access to state secrets entrusted to people whose allegiance was to Moscow, we could not have kept Crimea and have lost initial battles for some parts of eastern Ukraine. Are we in better positions now? Are we capable to provide quality response in the TV and social media, as well as on the battlefields. Our guest today is Volodymyr Polevi, the head of the Information Analysis Center of the National Security of Ukraine. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Hello. The situation in, in Ukraine is dangerously uh, uh, hot. I would say, dangerous politically. And what do you think about the intelligence influence of Russia, not only in Donbass and Crimea, but in other parts of Ukraine? You know, it's not a secret that uh, there are a lot of supporters of Russia in our society. It is, it is, only, it is not only about the Donbass, but about the all parts of our uh, country and uh, all parts uh, of our society. Um, and uh, this includes uh, the um, military forces, the counterintelligence, uh, the courts, and so on. In every part of our society, we have uh, the people we, who support Russia. And it is um, really uh, a problem, but after one year, a conflict um, have passed. Uh, we have some changes because um, uh, some people uh, um, becomes more Ukrainian, you know, mm -hmm. becomes more uh, patriotic mm -hmm. on the way to fight with uh, to fight with Russia. But uh, one of the strategies that uh, the uh Russian side is using is the provocations in mass media, informational uh, provocations. Uh, they sometimes uh, doesn't, you know, a lot of people can't figure out if it's a fake or not. The information uh, gets into the mass media and then it's spread around so fast and people start believing it. And that's, uh, that could be easily uh, leading into the political crisis of any kind. I think there are two parts of this conflict. Mm -hmm. One part, it is the Russian part, mm -hmm. and the other side uh, is uh, Ukraine. Um, and and uh, it, it concerns uh, what we do. It con concerns the correlation between what we say and what we do. It uh, concerns uh, about, it, it is about the truth and lie in our policy. Yeah. I want to be uh, honest. Uh, uh, to my mind, we don't have a policy, political will to fight with aggressor. And that is why our politicians and our media don't know what to say in, on the TV yes. or in the social media. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, because it seems to me it looks like uh, we want to more want to trade with Russia, not to fight with mm -hmm. Russia. Yes. yes? Um, uh, if you remember the elections promises of our president, uh, he said he would stop this war at five days. Yes. And it isn't true, yes? Um, he, f he would pay uh, for 1,000 uh, hryvnas for every soldier on the front. Yes. And it is not a true too. And uh, uh, so on. Well, uh, what, what, what do you think? Uh, the informational uh, influence, the influence of uh, 
different fakes and different uh, statements or which are said or not said or which are fulfilled or not fulfilled uh, that difference uh, that influence on the political political crisis that is here in Ukraine you know uh, uh, we have to say the word we are in war we yeah. are in war then this uh, War has some tools, instruments. Yeah. Information is one of these instruments. Is a, information is a weapon. And with information, you have propaganda, manipulation, destabilization. And uh, this is a new sort of war. This is a hybrid war. This is a hybrid war, and in this hybrid war, you have this large part with intelligence yeah and uh, this large part now is growing in my sense of analysis is growing because russia know that he can russia cannot invite ukraine but russia can destabilize ukraine and intelligence influence will be the key instrument to destabilize Ukraine. Well, uh, okay, but now we have uh, uh, other elections coming up in October, and that's very important for all the local uh, authorities um, to to have Ukraine uh, run a normal life. We need to fulfill all what's prescribed by mm -hmm. constitution. Mm -hmm. But that's a good chance again for the Russian intelligence and the Russian influence to come in and to, to continue the destabilization. What do you think? What are your uh, predictions for the future, for the upcoming uh, elections in October? There are um, some threats in these future elections. And I'm really concerned about the elections on the occupied territory. Okay. Because according to the Minsk agreement, we should to uh, organize the election on this territory, not only in the local uh, uh, level, yes, okay. but uh, we should to fulfill our uh, parliamentary uh, position in our parliament. Because now we had only we have only uh, 422 parliamentaries mm -hmm. uh, and we should to have uh, uh, 450 yes. parliamentaries mm -hmm. and it is uh, election uh, uh, the people uh, would vote for these um, candidates uh, on the majority districts on the occupied territory under the Russian control but that is a question how in the world can we do that because the all the armed men uh, they are. Uh, uh, they don't like anything that has to do with Ukraine whatsoever. Uh, uh, they are against uh, our representatives from uh, from Kiev, from the parliament. How? What, what? What do you know? How do you think this could be done? But that's the reality. Um, we hadn't uh, to. For example, we hadn't uh, change our. Uh, constitution, yes, but according to the Minsk agreement, uh, we had to uh, implement uh, uh, some form of decentralization and yeah. special status of Donbass region, region in our constitution, and we did it, yes, under the pressure of Russia, under the pressure of West, we did these strange things. That's the conditions, yes, they are fulfilled, and so what? What's next? Uh, as for me, uh, we would have uh, some form of frozen conflict mm -hmm. and it, uh, it would become more interior, not the conflict between Ukraine and Russia as we have now, mm -hmm. but it would be the interior conflict between the parts of Ukraine, yes, between uh -huh. some, uh, some representatives and, uh, for example, uh, militia mm -hmm. and military forces of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so are we saying that we're giving them the uh, il 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 legitimation? legitimation? They, they become legitimate? Yes, according to the Minsk agreement, they would become legitimate. Legitimate. Yeah. Yes, we are like in some scenario, like not totally like, but some part like Abkhazia and Georgia. Mm -hmm. see, this is like um, you, w you will have in Ukraine and semi-independent state, part of Ukraine, but with a large autonomy. And this state will be manipulated by Russia to destabilize but, but Ukraine. You know, Olivier, mm -hmm. Georgia didn't recognize yeah. Abkhazia yeah. as a part That's of That's why I say uh, part of. Yes, so um, but we should recognize yeah, Donbass as a part of That's our That's why territory. I say you will, be, you will have in Ukraine nonsense. Yeah, you will have in Ukraine in an in independent or a, a part of Ukraine with a large autonomy, and this large autonomy will be manipulated like a tool by Russia. But I want to deny a fact: Russia lost the classical war because at, at the beginning uh, the goal of Russia was to go to Kiev and to go to Kharkov and to go to, to Odessa and they lost the classical war. Yes. But, yes. but, but, now they are winning the information, information war and the influence war. And this is very dangerous. I I still, I still don't get it. Uh, yes, it was some of the conditions from Russia, and at the same time, Europe is supporting those conditions. Yeah. I guess one of the things they want to stop the war. No, as I say to you, we, uh, Europe is afraid yes. about Russia, and we don't want a war uh, with Russia. That's why in, in information, in newspaper, in TV, in Europe, we don't speak about a war in Ukraine. We speak about civil war, crisis. Okay. Yeah, use all kinds of terms yeah. instead yeah. of... Yeah, And that's why we ask the Ukraine to please, please stop. Because we don't want a war with Russia. And we do the same. We don't use the word war. Uh, in the official, yes. yes. In, in ATO, anti-terroristic uh, operation, operation, but not, not the war. Not the war. And That's why I think we have, when, when we have to do an interview, we have to say frankly frankly and honestly, this is a war. And stop to, 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 to make the other <coughs> words. Because so much different types of weapons is used, uh, uh, it's, it's hard to imagine any anti-terroristic operation with the use of all the real full-blown uh, military equipment and yeah. weaponry. Um, Okay, um, the thing is that um, uh, on one side we have a war in Donbass or an anti-terroristic operation, but on another side we are having a domestic war against corruption. And uh, whether we're winning or not, that's not a matter yet because we're not sure what is how, uh, going on. In some of our pre previous programs, we talked about some laws and some intentions that are publicly expressed, but at the same time, nothing is done. And so, um, what, what, what would you say uh, about the war against uh, corruption? Is anything changing? I think something uh, has been done uh, uh, for this time. But uh, I think we still have uh, an efficient uh, war or uh, struggle against the corruption in Ukraine. Um, you know, I have a special marker um, about this uh, war against corruption. It is a so-called free trade zone in Crimea, mm -hmm. in occupied Crimea. Uh, we have a law and it is uh, absolutely Legitimate, 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 uh -huh, legitimate, legitimate uh, mm -hmm. to trade with the occupied Crimea, with, with the whole Russia, on the condition of the free trade zone. Huh. And the next marker is uh, uh, customers, customer on the border with Donbass, uh, because uh, we proclamated that uh, there is no 
trade relation between Donbass and uh, Ukraine. O officially, that's officially, the position. But there are a lot of uh, con con uh, smuggling and smuggling contraband. Yes, mm -hmm, and con contraband. And uh, to my mind, uh, there is only way to resolve this problem uh, to organize uh, the customer uh, uh, ba no, points on the border mm -hmm. and uh, to, 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 to take the taxes from these uh, uh, goods. And, uh, so you would say you are in favor of uh, doing the trade between the between the main part of Ukraine and the uh, Donbass uh, territory? If we can stop okay. the trade it's better to organize it. with, with uh, Russia as an aggression state, yes, yes. Um, we should uh, to, uh, take a taxes from this trade. Okay, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Supposedly that's uh, an occupied territory, people are getting dead, getting killed. In that territory at this point, and uh, you know, yeah. Mm. And uh, for, for for me, I am more uh, more strict. Uh, I think we have to cut all the link. Uh, no connection. No connection. Strategically, yes. Strategically, it is only way. It is the only way, to, yes, to resolve the problem. If Russia is aggression, what are we talking about? So the, yes. uh, for example, during the during the First World War, the Second World War, the, we were in war against Germany, and mm. uh, <laughs> no, no trade, you know, <laughs> between uh, France and Germany during the war. So that's obvious. Then that's why I think uh, no, with Russia, you have to be strong. You cut all the links. But at the same time, uh, at the same time, uh, we have uh, you know in all the layer, layers of society there are issues like singers should be sing should singers be able to go and perform in Russia and do concerts and make money there or other businesses but recently the one of the major beer manufacturers in Kyiv uh, has announced that they're going to produce beer in Russia uh, I hope that's not the the truth and it's a fake but so it doesn't help. Uh, it doesn't help, uh, you know, bring peace uh, in in our society, and uh, it destabilizes destabilizes the society in all the different layers. During the First World War between French and Germany, a French company didn't go to Germany to produce beer or wine or something like that. Okay. Yes. And during the Second World War. Some um, car company like Renault worked for Germany during the Second World War, okay. and at the end, General de Gaulle make uh, Renault public company. Oh, so he nationalized yeah. it. Oh, that's interesting. You see, but that's what uh, like and first of all for me this is I I incredible. That's a company of in Ukraine. Ukraine is in war against uh, Russia in the Donbass and this company will do money in Russia? But that's what is that? But there there we go again. There is no official state of war. We have basically an anti terroristic operation. And and, and my friend on Ato they are fighting for what? I guess who? Well you're asking me. Yeah, no, I but ask I I ask yes, this is a general question. I, 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 <laughs> we had uh, uh, some discussion on this uh, subject with Olivier. Yes, uh, and uh, you know, um, I, this is, thank you, Olivier, that you mentioned the General de Gaulle. Mm -hmm. But uh, as for me, uh, our government is more like a Vichy government during the Second World War in France, not like the General de Gaulle mm -hmm. government. Uh, 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 during the war, because uh, we have the same, the occupied territory, the collaboration with the enemy on some uh, direction, for example, on trades with the same uh, free trade zone in Crimea. Yes, um, we have the negotiations and uh, and so on. Yeah, well, <coughs> um, at at one side, life has to continue, but on another side, until there are some specific uh, statesman, statements and law uh, or court uh, decisions uh, made, 
uh, for the public, um, w you know, to underline the previous uh, story and previous happenings, and to turn on, you know, uh, move us to a new uh, stage of our relationships. It's hard to talk about these things, um, but. Um, is your uh, opinion, in your opinion, Ukraine is, uh, is Ukraine the battlefield between uh, Europe and USA and Russia? Is that what, where the, uh, you know, clashes of interests are, is taking place? What, what would you say? What do you think? You know, the world, not only Ukraine, should stop Russia. And uh, in such point of view, Ukraine is definitely the battlefield with Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I want to emphasize uh, uh, not only on the relation between uh, European Union and Russia, but uh, um, I want to remind the Budapest Agreement in which uh, uh, United States the friends, uh, the uh, United Kingdom, mm -hmm. the Chinese, uh, and the Russia uh, were guarantee of our sovereignty and territorial integrity. Yes, and our task is uh, to stand fast, stand up, to uh, hold our borders, uh, to uh, uh, to save, uh, to keep safe our sovereignty and territorial, territorial integrity until our guarantors, mm -hmm. such as United States, British, France, and other countries, uh, uh, will organize the economical and other pressure on, on Russia. Yes, I wish it was that simple, but uh, looks like some things are happening, uh, either individually, like France didn't sell mistrials to Russia, or on the level of uh, European Union, like sanctions, official sanctions against mm -hmm. Russia. What do you think? Are they, are they effective? We are to increase the sanction against Russia, in that's, my point of that's view. That's exactly what because I Because are, we are running against the time. Yes. We don't have a lot of time, and we are to increase the sanction. I want to underline, this is not a war against the Russian people. This is a war against Putin and yes. a new imperialistic Russia. And we have to fight for values. Okay. Uh, what do you think about the sanctions? European values. <laughs> are, they, yeah, are, are they sufficient or what, what should be or could be done? I totally agree with Olivier that uh, we should uh, increase our uh, sanction against Russia, but uh, I want to ask the West countries, is this all? That's yeah. all? Yeah. And that's all what you can? You are the guarantors of our sovereignty. You are the countries of democratic values. Yes. Are looking at this aggression, at the occupation of Crimea, at the uh, uh, violation of human rights on our territory, and that's all. You, uh, uh, you, for, uh, you, uh, um, you stop some relations with, with some companies of Russia, and that's all. Yeah. yeah. So the question is: Is that everything that's they, that's done? that could be done uh, as a guarantee of the sovereignty of Ukraine that was signed in uh, Budapest. Or there is more to come. I hope, yes, I hope there is more to come. And we will keep you, uh, keep an eye on all latest developments and we'll, uh, yes, keep you posted because our mission is to introduce the real Ukraine to the rest of the world. It was United Country UAT time by First Ukraine. Thank you for joining us for a cup of tea. Olivier Drin and Sergei Velichansky were working for you in the studio. Stay with us and we will show you the real Ukraine. Thank you for being with us. Have a good day and see you soon. Thank you.